This video is sponsored by Tiny Build Games. Hey everybody, it's Party Elite, and today I'm excited to showcase the management and empire building game Cartel Tycoon, a game you might have actually seen me play on the channel before at the end of last year. If you missed it then, I'm here now to highlight its early access launch as it prepares to get a full release sometime either later this year or early next. If you like what you see today, you can check the links out in the description and pinned comment down below, one to pick the game up for yourself, and the other for a raffle where you can enter to win a free copy, but more on that at the end of the video. For now, without any more time to waste, let's dive right into this early access build and take a look at Cartel Tycoon. From Story to Sandbox Cartel Tycoon in its early access form hints at a challenge mode and multiplayer mode, but focuses on a chunk of the story as well as a sandbox mode for now. In the story mode, you follow the tale of Cesar as they come across a conspicuous job opportunity that ends up involving the local cartel. No real spoilers here, but starting from some very basic operations, you eventually end up pretty much in charge of the whole thing, and though the story starts with some constraints and an integrated tutorial, most of it is very flexible, allowing you to take risks and make some alternative choices right off the bat. Once the chains are completely off, however, you're pretty well free to do as you wish, though a core narrative and its broad strokes objectives still drive your decision-making process. But like I said, those objectives are extremely broad strokes and the finer points of the approach are entirely up to you. Now, the whole story isn't in this early access build, that's why, as I said earlier, I'm not really including any spoilers because there aren't really any spoilers to be had. One thing I will avoid mentioning, though, is exactly what triggers the end of the story in the early access build. It's, uh, that would be a spoiler, and it's pretty interesting. But suffice it to say, there's a good bit of fun to be had with the narrative before you even need to step in to the sandbox. But once you do, a whole new world opens up. You're able to customize your start in a few ways, including who you're going in as with your capo, and what skills and abilities they begin the game with. You're also able to select your starting location, which impacts what kind of business you might specialize in, and the various constraints you'll have to work around, and after that, you're off to the races. You start with a decent sum of money to establish the first steps of your operation, and before long, you'll be eyeing nearby territory to conquer, growing to be the only cartel in this fictional reference to Latin America. The game, in any of its modes, starts to get complex quickly. There are many moving parts, each intertwined intricately, and with its dual economy and distinction between legal and illegal activities, we're looking at a game that takes the topic of running a cartel more seriously than tends to be the norm out there, looking to simulate supply chains, the hierarchy, and the legal ramifications of the whole business. So, let's take a look at it, piece by piece. Human Resources No business can flourish without the people who work it. While you won't be responsible for recruiting every individual farmer, packer, truck driver, or pilot, you will be involved in the recruitment of upper management. Your lieutenants are crucial for maintaining your operations, whether it's just the smooth running of what you already own, the acquisition of new business, the generation of wealth, or the elimination of threats. They can be recruited from residences that you can either build yourself or that you'll find littered around the map, and they all have their own set of skills that can come in handy for different purposes, which different sizes and speeds of vehicles to help ferry them and product around as needed. While some might be able to, say, speed up your farms, others provide your buildings with more trucks so they can ship goods more quickly, while others still might be best used for very specific actions. While they can all be left to garrison cities and ports to maintain control over them, some have additional talents that you'll want to tap into from time to time, if not consistently. Some can assassinate characters for you, so if anybody's starting to cause you trouble or is starting to get some ideas, maybe you assassinate them. Others can rob banks or perform kidnappings to generate some very quick wealth at the risk of drawing the attention of authorities, and some are arsonists more than happy to burn down buildings at the risk of that same attention. Not all these skills are available at once through anyone, of course. These lieutenants need to be leveled up, gaining experience by participating in the business, getting promoted, and unlocking more and more skills as they do so, albeit at the cost of a higher salary. One that if you fail to pay, will cost you in other ways. Loyal lieutenants are less likely to try something, but as these characters get disgruntled, you'll notice they'll make up for missed paychecks through things like stolen product, or they'll prove their volatility by acting out of your control, 
They might burn one of your own buildings down, formally demolish one, rob a bank, perform a kidnapping, or do any number of actions available to them to make it clear they're displeased. Sometimes, if the situation gets bad enough, your lieutenants might even decide you're not fit to lead, and one might just have you killed, leaving you to pick a new capo from among your lieutenants to continue as, or calling it an end to your empire if you so prefer. Even when you aren't just murdered in cold blood, the actions of angry lieutenants can often trigger unexpected consequences like, again, drawing too much heat, or in the case of having one of your buildings burned down, the loss of product and production. Making and delivering the goods. A business like this is nothing without its product. This isn't the service industry after all. And as far as actually acquiring product, you're in complete control. Your initial capabilities will revolve around opium, but as you grow, you'll be able to research higher level buildings in the production chain, unlocking, among other things, higher level farms that allow you to produce marijuana, cocaine, and more. But as you may or may not know, some of these things don't just grow from the ground to be consumed directly. They need to be processed. So while you look for suitable fertile ground for the crops themselves, you'll also look to establish the processing facilities where the product will be stored, dried, repackaged, cut, or otherwise prepared using a mixture of raw materials that you have to build the infrastructure and systems to provide. Farms, yes, but also chemical plants, plantations, all sorts of things depending on what you're trying to produce and the raw materials that they require. This kind of stuff is very interesting to me, and it makes the supply chain dynamic a lot more complex than you might initially anticipate. Each of the products has its own process, and each is worth a different amount to you from a purely financial perspective, but each also has alternative uses that we'll get into in just a moment. Before long, you'll have a sprawling network of farms, warehouses, and processing facilities that hopefully work seamlessly as long as you keep them funded and you've optimized your road placements and types. Upkeep costs of your lieutenants and of all these buildings will slowly drain your wealth, so you need to make sure that you're not just producing the goods, but actually shipping them out as well. Littered across the map are aerodromes, seaports, and road checkpoints, and each of them can be used to sell products, though each has its pros and cons. The checkpoint and seaport, for example, need to be garrisoned by a lieutenant periodically. Fail to do so, and a rival gang will move in to take it over for their own operation. The aerodrome can be left unoccupied. But the aerodrome unfortunately can only ship a small bit of product at a time, which means the rate at which it generates wealth might be a bit slower. And though the seaport is able to ship a massive amount of product at a time, it all needs to be packaged in smuggling materials, which means you'll need to grow or buy vegetables or produce TVs or some other product that your workshops can then stuff full of whatever you're trying to sell before it gets taken to the seaport. Road checkpoints will also need this kind of repackaging treatment, but there's a very short cooldown between shipments so you can establish a constant flow of goods and wealth. And if the ports that exist don't suffice, don't forget who you are. You're a cartel boss. You can, with the right research and money, just build one for yourself. Keep in mind though, the more moving parts you have, the more upkeep you need to do, not just in the actual retention of these locations through the use of lieutenants, but also in operational costs. Creative Accounting Cash rules everything, and it's all about the Benjamins, baby. Money makes the world go around in this business just like any other. Well, almost like any other. Almost all of the money you make in Cartel Tycoon will be dirty money. And while dirty money can be used to pay upkeep costs and build certain buildings, it can be significantly harder to do so, and it has its limitations. The cold, hard cash needs to be shipped around from where it's earned, be it the aerodrome, the seaport, or the checkpoints. Just like product, your lieutenants and residences can be assigned to move dirty money to where it's needed. But if you don't stay on top of it, buildings will stop operating and paychecks will stop getting paid. This can bring your entire operation to a grinding halt, and it can upset the people that help run it. It's a lot easier to accumulate, sure, but a lot harder to distribute. So you're going to have to figure out if you can keep it all in check, and you might prefer instead to work with clean money. Laundering money is a big part of Cartel Tycoon, requiring you to establish legitimate businesses in the cities, 
funneling dirty money to them, not just to keep them operating, but to in turn also change some of that dirty money into clean money. You're laundering it. You're, you're making it clean. Taxi companies are among the cheapest to operate, but they can't turn around as much money at a time as, say, a casino or a circus. Churches, salsa clubs, amusement parks, jewelry stores, charitable foundations, and more will all compete for the limited number of slots available at a city, and you'll need to leave room for research labs to further your capabilities and hotels to help with recruitment and with keeping things moving as well. Any single city can only hold so many buildings, and you'll want to maintain a good synergy between them so you have a constant and significant flow of clean money, but you also have access to other services as needed. Again, like I said, research. Apart from the aforementioned research, you'll also want to use these businesses for charitable events and donations from time to time to improve people's opinions of you and your operation. People will be a lot more accepting of a cartel that uses some of its wealth to better the community. And while some buildings give a bump to that level of acceptance by simply being built, others will have an active component to them that takes some money in return for the aforementioned improved opinion. Ultimately though, to stay on the topic of money, clean money moves around on its own. Wire transfers, automatic deposits, plastic, or whatever other method you can imagine, clean money does not need to be shipped around. As long as you have some money in the bank, it'll automatically be used where you've set it to be, and you can tap into it for construction, research, etc., etc. You'll have to keep in mind the staggering of cash flow, though. Remember, trucks move product to ports, where it takes time for the dirty money to arrive. Then, trucks move the dirty money to your residences, and from those residences, they move the dirty money to assigned laundering operations. You can have left tenants take money directly to laundering operations from ports as a desperate measure, but that means they're not doing something else that they might need to be doing instead. But that's not all. Once the money actually arrives dirty at the laundering operation, it takes time to launder the money. And these laundering operations need dirty money as a daily upkeep cost. So while you're pouring dirty money into a legitimate business, it might not give you any returns for four to five days. If you run low on clean money, your ports might stop operating. And if your ports stop operating, you're not making any more dirty money. And if you're not making any more dirty money, then your laundering operations will stop working as well. And the next thing you know, you're robbing banks or performing kidnappings to make ends meet. To avoid this, you'll want to constantly be expanding, pushing your operations to newer and newer heights. Expanding your empire. Eventually, one region just won't be enough for everything you want to accomplish. Cities only have a certain number of slots for buildings, not all land is good for all kinds of crops, you might not have access to more efficient packaging where you're currently located, and eventually, you start running out of space to build everything you want. And if none of these reasons are enough for you, then maybe you just don't want any competition. Expansion involves two parts working together. One part involves dealing with mayors of neighboring cities through diplomacy, and the other part involves dealing with rival gangs in neighboring cities through violence. Both can be fairly involved processes, especially depending on your target. You also don't necessarily have to do both, but chances are you'll want to. See, while you can build and travel freely in territory you own, constructing farms, workshops, warehouses, infrastructure, and more, you don't have access to any of these tools in territory under the influence of others. All you can do in those territories is capture assets that already exist. Sending your people in, you can pit their power stat against the power of any defenders, and over time, through a shootout, you'll either win and acquire the targeted asset, or you'll be forced out with any of your lieutenants in the area murdered in the shootout. Now, these shootouts can get pretty intense, especially if you're the one being attacked, and you need to quickly send reinforcements in to prevent the loss of an asset that you already own. And I can imagine multiplayer engagements being particularly interesting, but that's just speculation for now. Either way, once assets have been taken over, you're able to start using them as if they were your own. Things might be a little inefficient, but you can't do much about it without having access to building options in the region. But perhaps the biggest restriction and the biggest issue is the limits on your freedom of movement. See, if the region doesn't belong to you, 
anytime your people have to move product or dirty money through the city in the region, they have to pay a bribe. This cuts into your profits and when push comes to shove, it can cause some major cash flow problems that you'll want to curtail. In order to actually take over a city and the entire region as a whole, you have to convince the mayor to work with you, and that typically comes in a few steps. Generically speaking, you'll need to improve people's opinions of you through donations or building the right buildings like I was mentioning earlier. You'll also need to remove the rival gang's presence from the region, and you'll need to deliver some kind of product to the mayor, either a cash bribe or some actual illicit goods, depending on the mayor. And within a matter of just a few actions from you, you've got the mayor in your pocket, no more bribes to pay, the region under your full control, the option to build more spots to launder money from within the new city, and access to a few new interactions with the mayor themselves. One of the key uses of the mayor is actually to get some heat off of you. At the cost of public opinion, he can make your operation look a little softer and so like less of a threat to the authorities. You might want to act tough, but attention from the authorities will hamper your business and you don't want to find yourself on the wrong end of an American soldier and their M16. Dealing with authorities. Rival gangs making a move on your assets is the least of your concerns. You need to be more worried about the attention that this brings to your operation. Any aggressive moves, like getting involved in firefights, whether you're the attacker or the defender, trafficking goods through unowned cities, committing arson, robbing banks, kidnapping, assassinating, all of these somewhat overt acts will increase your operation's terror level. You might start as a mere nuisance, but as you get involved in more heinous acts, the authorities will start taking an interest in you. The police might be of little concern. The DEA, they're nothing. But once the Federales, or yes, the US military gets involved, you're going to start seeing trouble. At the smallest scale, you're going to see police raids and shootouts at your operations in an attempt to shut them down temporarily. Depending on what's being raided, you might let the cops have their win and just wait for the restrictions to lift afterwards. As things escalate, you might occasionally get authorities performing investigations at your ports, actively keeping an eye out for your work. When that's happening, you can keep the port operational, reducing your profit margin as you have to take extra steps to get product out, or you can shut the port down temporarily, waiting for the investigation to fail. Investigations take time, but the further you let them progress before shutting the investigated port down, the longer it'll take for the investigation to fail. This becomes a tug of war of sorts between your desperate need for money to keep your operation running and the risk of having a more permanent shutdown that results from a successful investigation. Things escalate even further beyond this, but there are definitely some surprises that I feel are best left experienced for yourself, so I'm not going to spoil them. Suffice it to say, you'll want to keep your terror level in check, and that means being involved in charitable events and building churches and the like just to use your PR as a resource to convince authorities you're not worth their time. This terror level mechanic is why you need to be extra careful about how you expand and about running out of money to pay your employees. Anytime you attack or defend an asset, you're racking up terror. Anytime your people are involved in bank robberies or kidnappings, you're racking up terror. Lose control of your people and you'll have the authorities breathing down your neck in no time potentially cutting off the very income you need to keep people in check and potentially opening you up for attack by rival gangs. There is a potential cascading effect waiting to topple your empire. Or at least the person at its head. Yes, I mean you. Cartel Tycoon is about running your own business. Illicit as it might be, the game takes the topic seriously and breaks it down to its constituent parts. From farm to table, you're in charge of the whole operation, and seeing it all come together or fall apart is all part of the experience. If you'd like to grab the game, you can check out the link in the description and pinned comment down below. I hope this video gives you some insight into Cartel Tycoon. I have some gameplay on the channel from an older build as well that does a good job of showing it all in action, and there's also a giveaway running which I've also linked in the pinned comment and description down below. Between today, the 3rd of June, and next week Thursday, the 10th of June, you can enter for a chance to win a Steam key by simply joining the developer Discord or by retweeting one of their tweets. There's no other obligation, so don't hesitate to check it out. If you have any questions or concerns, leave them in the comments down below and I'll answer all that I can. As always, make sure to subscribe to the channel for more strategy gaming content and also as always, a 
Massive thanks goes out to all of the channel members and patrons who've been supporting the channel on a monthly basis. Y'all keep us alive and running smoothly. And of course, a big ol' thanks goes out to each and every one of you for watching. Until next time. Cheers.